Before this starts, I want to put some pretext that I've been seeing lately how biased this review was, so I wanted to revisit it. I've never really been for or against this creator so I'm going into this with an open mind. Also keep in mind that this video is 9 years old so some of the memes and stuff will probably be outdated. <laughs> Sonic Adventure 2 is one of the few Sonic games that everyone remembers fondly. Okay, right off the bat. Who the fuck is everyone? Also, that is not the impression I have from general audiences. And by general audiences, I mean all the people on Twitter who flip-flop on every topic you could imagine constantly. Also, I don't remember being very fond of this game, but that's because I tortured myself by getting all of the S-rank emblems in this game. Obviously, it came out on the Dreamcast first, but I personally really didn't start playing it until it came out on the GameCube. Just a quick note here, the GameCube version is a port that launched six months after the release of the original Dreamcast game. They added bonus stages, improvements to the multiplayer, an expanded story, improved lighting, and upscaled graphics, along with higher poly models of the characters, also runs at 60 FPS instead of the 30 that the Dreamcast version ran on, and an opening cinematic before the title screen was added as well. This is considered to be like one of the few really good 3D Sonic games. I don't know how true this stance is, since Sonic Unleashed came out in 2008 and Generations came out in 2011. But if he means way back when the only 3D Sonic games were the two adventure games, 3D Blast, and Heroes that I guess to was considered the best. I can't say for sure though. Also, I prefer Sonic Adventure 1 over 2, but I digress. And this became no more apparent than when I did a review on Sonic Boom. I guess I was correct in my assumption that he glossed over Unleashed Colors and Generations. I like when I'm doing these reactions and the people I'm reacting to. Prove me right five seconds later. The last good Sonic game was Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic Adventure 2 is good. I love Sonic, but this game is bull out of 10. Just make something similar to Sonic Adventure. They should have just made a better game like Sonic Adventure 3. I told them to make Sonic Adventure 3 and they did it. We need to go back to the Sonic Adventure style and have a Sonic Adventure 3. We need another game like Sonic Adventure. We need Sonic Adventure 3. If we look up reviews from Metacritic, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed is the highest rated 3D Sonic with a critic score of 80 to and user score of 8.4, followed by Sonic Colors. A small sample size of your own comment section doesn't really prove anything. Also, where were these comments even pulled from? It seems a little disingenuous. I really remember liking Sonic Adventure 2, and it's been so long since I've played this, I really wanted to go back and see exactly why it is that we all like this game so very, very much. The biggest draw to Adventure 2 is the second Dark Story campaign mode, but we're gonna go through this in order and start with the hero side. It starts off with a gun helicopter transporting a prisoner, who happens to be Sonic the Hedgehog. He somehow escapes and, according to the pilot, kills everyone on board. Doesn't necessarily mean kill. He could have just knocked them out or stunned them with his riz. The TikTok kids are kicking my ass with this lingo. What in the goddamn hell is a G-yacht? He then jumps to the top of the copter, pulls off a chunk of it, and hops down into what may be one of the best opening sequences to any video game ever. Look at me go. Energy of the song, snowboarding through a city, causing thousands of dollars in property damage. It's awesome! This song alone is embedded into the hearts of anyone who has ever played this game. And this very first stage encompasses what everyone believes a Sonic game to be. A high emphasis on constant speed, a way to perpetually move forward, and minimal platforming. Even though this level has parts that would be completely unacceptable in other games, we forget it. Why'd he let go of the bar straight into the pit of death? That was some gamer journalism level of playing if I've ever seen it. Because it's Sonic, and we're going fast. For example, 
This entire section where you're running from a truck that's the size of every house and the camera is way too close to you, making it impossible to know what's coming ahead, we don't care. Because Sonic. Who is this royal we he speaks of cuz it's not me. Also this being chased by a car segment is the worst part of the stage since you're running towards a camera and can't see the obstacles ahead of you. Also the car is a little too aggressive. A better stage for me is Shadow's Radical Highway. Are all of Shadow's stages if I'm being honest with myself? And you know, I don't care either. This goes right into the very first boss fight, a mech from the gun organization, which as a child, I swear was a Timberwolf from Battletech. And now that I'm playing it again, the moment that this boss fight began, a new memory unearthed itself in my brain. It was a memory that I had suppressed for a long, long time. A scattered dream that's like a far-off memory. A far-off memory that's like a scattered dream. Only to be realized at this very moment. This game sucks. It sucks really, really bad. The boss itself is rather inoffensive. What? The boss is fine, but the game sucks. How does that work? My guy. Hit him in the cockpit whenever you can. Roaring rock, rippity roo, rick him in the wristband, roo, roo, roo. But it's the execution of everything else that's just terrible. The camera is directly behind Sonic. The camera is always directly behind Sonic. Making it impossible to see anything around you. For this boss fight, you're in a very tiny enclosed area. You don't really need to see anything behind you. That might be why the camera looks off to you. Or why you can't change the position of the camera at all. And with the camera always locked onto the boss, camera control is taken further away from you. You don't have camera control at all in this boss fight. They didn't design it with a lot of space in mind. Again, you're in a really tiny enclosed space. I think the developers just expected players to be able to beat this easily and not think twice about it. And the arena is designed against the player. No, not really. Or I should ask how. This is not a hard fight at all. My guy. He's acting like he's playing Bloodborne or something. There are all these crates that you're supposed to stand on to hit your target, which is fine. But several of these crates are placed outside the playable arena, tricking players into thinking that they can go that way in the first place. I think that is just a level design aesthetic. You do not need to jump on the crates to be able to hit the boss. And the only thing conveying any kind of barrier is a curve that goes up to your ankles. That's what we call an invisible wall. I'm not gonna repeat myself three times. Any reasonable person would believe that they can go out further than the game allows them to. If you're hitting an invisible wall and cannot leave the area, and the camera is locked onto the enemy that is floating in a giant circle, why would you think you can leave the area? Have you ever played a video game before? Does this make the boss fight hard? No, he's easy as crap. Okay, then what are we doing here? But that doesn't mean it doesn't have problems that should be ignored. I'd say a bigger problem with this fight is the boss's hitbox being small. But with the way he beat it, it's clearly not a problem. The fixed camera isn't great. But that was more an issue with the stage itself since the area you're fighting in is also small. The stage should be bigger. And they fixed that with Shadow's version of this fight. Maybe the developers didn't want to put in a lot of resources for a throwaway easy fight. And with the robot defeated, the pivotal moment. Sonic meets Keanu Reeves, who is there hanging out for some reason, monologuing to himself about the power of the Chaos Emerald. I didn't think I'd have to explain this, but he's there because Shadow's stage Radical Highway comes before this scene happens in the Hero Campaign. Chronologically, the Dark Side campaign happens before the Hero's side does. Why? I don't know I didn't make the game. That's when Sonic has a sudden realization. That's stupid. I mean, really? Does anyone actually think they even look remotely alike? Apparently, Amy did think they looked identical at one point. Look at them! Shadow's quills curve upward, he has bracelets on, the tuft of hair on his chest is completely different than Sonic's oval thingy, their shoes are different. Maybe everyone thought Sonic got an edgy makeover and weren't judgmental about it. Related note, Amy is a hedgehog too, right? So why hasn't anyone ever confused her with Sonic? They're both hedgehogs, and clearly they don't see color, which, good for them, so why hasn't she been a problem? I don't know. I'm not defending this plot line from the game. 
You made your point, now let's move on. Meanwhile, Knuckles is defending the Master Emerald from a new character, Rouge the Bat, who wants to steal it because reasons. They're both dumb as rocks, because Dr. Eggman literally crane games it directly in front of them. But Knuckles leaps up and, I guess, punches it or something? Yes and no. He actually explains in-game, in this very cutscene, that he shattered it on purpose so that Eggman couldn't steal it and that he could very easily locate its pieces and reform it which to him is better than it being stolen and used for Eggman's scheme. The camera cuts to just a beat after whatever it was that Knuckles did and it shatters, setting up Knuckles' stages, which involves finding three pieces of the Master Emerald in each stage. And nobody likes these. I don't like when he says nobody likes these or everyone loved this. I think he should speak for himself. I'd also argue that tail stages are the worst stages in the game. I'm not saying Knuckles' stages don't have their share of frustration, especially with the radar that only works for one emerald in sequential order. But this royal we, they, nobody speak is weird coming from a subjective review. Basically, it's a crapshoot every time you play the stage. The emerald pieces are put in purely random places every time. I don't know the exact number, but there is a finite amount of places the emerald pieces can generate. If you play the level enough times, you can get a feel for how this mechanic works. Which means it's almost never in the same place twice. Once you learn which clue leads to which piece, you can just reset the level so you can find the emerald pieces in the same places. That's really the strategy for getting the good ranks like I said earlier. However, this is not applicable to the hard challenge in each of these levels because those are based on time and have only one set of locations for each emerald piece. Your only clue is this radar at the bottom, which begins changing colors, letting you know how close you are to it. Well, no, they do give you actual hints in the levels as well. You're literally standing right next to one. Here are the many problems with the knuckle stages. The radar, for one. It only works on the first piece at a time. It's annoying, sure. But they may have done that because in the first Sonic Adventure, the radar went off for all of the emerald pieces at the same time, and it was a headache. It might have playtested better to do one at a time. Which means even if you're directly on top of another one, it won't signal and you can completely miss it. I'm not sure how valid this is, but apparently you have to find an emerald piece so that the next one spawns. However, sometimes you can see pieces that have already spawned out of order, so I genuinely don't know. This needlessly extends the time it takes to complete these dreadful stages. You can use the hitboxes, but that lowers your score. This guy is just like Aaron Hansen. I think just beating the level takes precedence over trying to get the best rank. Especially if it's your first time playing the level. Worst case scenario, you can just look up where the pieces are on Google or GameFAQs. And if you want to A rank every stage, you can't use them. You can. As long as you find the pieces fast enough, you can use the hints. If anything, the hints are going to signify which generated locations spawn so you can use at least one to signify which pieces you have to find and go from there. Again, that's the strategy for the better ranks is just learning where each piece spawns because the hints for where each piece are is always going to be the same. Trust me, I've gotten the 180 emblems. I know a thing or two about this lol. And combined with the fact that the emeralds are in completely random places every time, speedrunning these areas is impossible and relies solely on luck. If it's impossible, then how are there people who can do it without luck? There is a finite amount of places where each piece of the master emerald can be hidden. Like I said before, the clues will always be the same for where the pieces are hidden. I'm not gonna keep repeating myself. And if you die, the emeralds move locations again, making all previous hints worthless. Right, because it resets the level. I mean, you weren't gonna find the emerald piece anyway, so you may as well look for a new one. You know how people hate it when everything slows down in a Sonic game? That is literally just Aaron Hansen. He is the only person I've ever heard make that complaint. Imagine everything slowing down for 5 to 10 minutes at a time. For an entire stage. The point of the stage is to find a piece of an emerald as fast as you can. You're not exactly going at a snail's pace. You have to beat the level fairly quickly to get a good rank on it. The pacing of the game may feel slowed down since you do get stuck on these levels. 
But once you get the hang of them, they're not that bad. Well, rouge stages aren't. Knuckles are all way too big for their own good. Does he talk about how huge knuckle stages are, or am I getting ahead of myself? Another problem is controlling knuckles. The dude runs fast, like practically Sonic fast. Well, yeah, he's known for being almost as fast as Sonic. Also, I just find it funny how he complained about how slow finding the pieces was a minute ago and now he's complaining about how fast the character moves. In fact, too fast. Too fast, too furious. I'm too fast for y'all, man. His stages are small arena-like areas that typically have multiple chambers. <laughs> But it doesn't really give much room to run around. How can you say that when you're showing footage of you, as Knuckles, running around? Also, why are you only showing footage from the first stage when the levels get progressively bigger as the game continues? Make this argument using footage from Meteor Herd, or write you can't. That stage is ginormous. It's not conducive to his level design. Conducive, the fuck? LOL, Knuckles stages were built around his speed and gliding. I'm not trying to say get good or whatever, but they're not as hard as you're making it out to be. At no point does having fast movement help Knuckles or the player. So you want Knuckles to walk at a snail's pace. I don't understand this argument at all. Knuckles is known for his speed. Why would you want him to move slow? He was even fast in the first Sonic Adventure. It only makes him harder to control. But most importantly, it's not fun. According to who, you're just making shit up. What do you mean it's not fun to play as Knuckles? Running around, gliding, and destroying boxes as Knuckles is the best part of his levels. Hide and seek with Knuckles isn't fun. Finding the emerald pieces is fine. I don't really have a problem with that aspect of his stages. I mean, who doesn't like a good scavenger hunt every now and then? You know what's fun with Knuckles? Punching dudes. That's what he does. Make Knuckles about hitting things. You're literally showing footage of him hitting things. Every single one of these levels are just huge time wasters. You can say that about any game or any level, really. They suck. It's not Sonic. Because it's Knuckles.